It's a great evening, and so we thank we thank Jesus, and I just know you join me in, in just giving him all the praise and all the honor. Amen. Isn't Jesus so good? Yeah. You know? Amen. He is so good. So I thank you, Jesus, for the covering you provide for us, uh, the fellowship you encourage us to come into together. There is so much going on right now in this place, mm -hmm. in all this place. Um, you got to just open up and sense it. There's, there's so much, you know, he, he says, I don't come with a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and power and sound mind. And, and he's fulfilling on that right this moment. We're in for such a great treat tonight. And I thank you, Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're in Abba's place. And um, let's see, this is March. So soon we'll have been here a year. Can you believe that already? Yeah, so April 1st began the time that we came here, and, and uh, about 45 days later, we were here, actually moved in and operating. And we're so grateful for God's gift of a place where people can come and receive healing prayer. Doesn't matter where you're from, what church you're in. Maybe you're not even in a church. Uh, so you know, uh, a couple of people asked for cards. We do have, uh, we do have these cards they only tell you about Christian Healing Center. They don't have a person's name on here. But they have a white space. So as you go and as the Lord prompts you to say, you know, this person might like to know about Christian Healing Center. Feel free to take some of these. I'll pull some more out. They'll be on the desk out front. And share them. You know, because we don't charge, as most of you know. Uh, we don't charge for prayer. Everything here is given. <laughs> God has been so generous with us. Everything here is given. And so it's a safe place to come and receive healing prayer. And uh, so, you know, if you haven't been in the prayer room, uh, prayer appointments, for whatever reason God's ordained this, they run about 90 minutes. We don't even watch the clock, and it just seems like, you know, that's what happens. And uh, Jesus is always present. You know, his word says he's the most real person ever. And I'll never leave you, never forsake you. And when two or more are gathered together, right, he's in our midst. So we always know Jesus is here. And because this is of his place, uh, we always know the presence of God is here. I, th I think there's probably 25 people that have keys to the front door now. I have a list, so I, I think I know who they are. But, you know, it's his place. So uh, people said, you know, I would come and go if I had a key, right? And because we now have this space, I'm sharing this with you just as a reminder. Some of you know this. But come May, May 17 and 18, the Men's Life Relaunch that's hosted by Trio Life Church is uh, held here because of the size, convenience, and the facilitation of the place. It's beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? And Orphan Hearts International is another ministry. And because they don't have a place, you know, they've come. They're a parallel healing ministry. And so they've used Christian Healing Center um, the uh, Grow Church is kind of sort of starting a healing mission called uh, Grace Works Healing Ministry, and they've, they've uh, begun to partner with us here. And uh, one of their offshoots into his presence is, is having meetings here. So it's a place God wants to use, right? And so I encourage you, as you think about it, uh, Healing Strong has held their meetings here. So that's our heart is to make uh, the place available to people. There's a lending library. Actually has the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> How much fun is that? <laughs> With the licensed librarian, right? And so Noreen keeps that. So there's lots of good books to check in and check out. All right. Any questions about Christian Healing Center? You know, we're here to provide prayer for people. We're here to help people who feel a call in their life to be moving into healing ministry. So we're here to do that. And uh, we're here to help churches, you know, and community. Uh, God's about creating a kingdom come that's very, very tangible right here in Southwest Florida. And you're part of that. Your church is part of that, whether it knows it or not. But the church in Naples is gathering for a purpose. And right now, I believe there's probably six churches present. And um, it's usually been the case. I, I can only remember maybe one time where... God didn't have at least eight or ten churches present in an evening meeting here. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So we thank you, Jesus, and for all that you do for us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, so just a couple other announcements. Uh, on the desk out there, you know, we could be in a healing meeting every night 
almost uh, all over this part of Florida. It wasn't like that seven or eight years ago. There was a church or two, like Tree of Life, where you could have a healing conversation, right? But uh, it was kind of new for us anyway. But Thursday night, Healing in the Glory with Bree Keaton. So if you don't know anything about Bree, I didn't know anything about Bree until just a little while ago when our friend uh, Maria Goldstein called and said, hey, Bree's going to be in town, and we're looking for something to do Thursday night. Well, who's Bree? Oh, she has a ministry to pygmies in the Congo. Really? That's different. Yeah, well, she was shot in the head one night. She woke up and, you know, that's part of her testimony, uh, uh, coming to the Lord. But uh, go on her website. You know, the pygmies in the Congo have been really under siege. I mean, people eat pygmies. I didn't know that. And she has uh, pulled 80,000 pygmies out of harm's way and given them housing and all sorts of things. So she has a, an, an amazing story that goes beyond that. And so if you want to come and have a good time, just grab a flyer. She'll be at Faith Lutheran Church in the Fellowship Hall starting at 7 p.m. on Thursday. I think it's going to be a great place to be. She says, when I teach, I do it uh, in a multimedia fashion. And so you'll see visuals and audios and all sorts of things going on. And her message is amazing. She, she shared with me uh, about being transported from one place to the next. I know that you'll hear about that from her. And you would want to hear from her. I, it was blowing me away. And then um, there's a meeting on March 19. We published it. It's been published in a few churches. But if you really want to begin to connect into uh, our brothers and sisters uh, in the Jewish faith. Purim is a great place to be, right, at the Jewish Federation. So I'll have this out on the front desk too, but it's on the website. And that's March 19. And I hear it's a party. And I hear that we can go and have a good time. And uh, everyone's welcome. And But learning more about Canberra, the partnership of Christians and Jews, good place to spend some time. It's good soil. It's, good, it's a good place to really sow into. And then just back to Christian Healing Center, what are we doing? Well, we're going to be um, having another evening meeting on April 9th. And that one is going to be led by Dr. Steve Hodge, MD. He's a member of the board. He has, a, he has one of the most incredible testimonies about his life walk with the Lord and healing ministry that you'll ever hear. He gave it about six years ago, right in the middle of, of COVID. Maybe it wasn't that long ago. Miller COVID, he gives it, right? And somehow we lost that recording. <laughs> but it's been long enough to where if you heard it then, it's okay. You're going to enjoy hearing it again. Uh, great testimony from Dr. Hodge, who spends half his uh, year in Louisville, Kentucky. He's on the board with Men's Life for Elon. She does prison ministry there. And he's a retired MD who's head over heels in love with Jesus. So if you haven't met uh, Steve and his wife, Kathy, you want to be here for that. And then finally, just to keep you tuned in, September 20 through September 24, 2025, you want to be in the Bahamas for the Christian Healing Center's International Healing Conference that's been called, and it's coming together. We have a, an amazing uh, group of presenters that have agreed. Joan Hunter is going to come, Craig Miller's coming, Nigel Mumford's coming, Dr. Mary Heaton from the Catholic Church coming. It's intended to be a Christian ecumenical body. And the, and the discussion is not so much presenting as it is sharing information. Like, what's God doing today? And hearing from people that have been all over the world, what's God doing today? And what's he doing tomorrow? And then how do we connect with him? And how do we, how do we participate in what he's doing? Because this is, I, I gotta say, other than the time Jesus walked on the planet, this has gotta be the most amazing Amazing time to be alive. There's not a lot of gray going on right now. It's pretty black and white. That's evil. Either evil or good. <laughs> Pick your team and run. Run with that team, right? And you're going to have a blast. So thank you very much. Quentin Burns uh, will come. It's yeah. always an honor to be here with you guys at the Christian Healing Center of Naples. And um, I'm honored to be here. Mm -hmm. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we honor you. Lord, we ask that your anointing will continue to flow. Lord, we ask that you'll speak through my heart and speak through my mind, speak through my mouth. And we pray that all of you will manifest through me, Lord God, as I minister to your precious people. 
And we thank you, Lord God, for the move of your spirit tonight, Lord God. Let our hearts and minds be ready to hear from you, not from a man, but from here from you, Lord God, that we may be edified and we may be comforted and we may be guided by your spirit in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I'm going to start in uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. And it reads, And God said, Now will we make humans, and they will be like us. We will let them rule over the fish, over the birds, and over all the living creatures. So God created humans to be like himself. He made men and women. God gave them the blessing and said, have a lot of children, fill the earth with people, bring it under control, rule over the fish in the ocean, the birds of the sky, and every animal on the earth. I have provided all kinds of fruit and grain for you to eat, and I have given the green plants as food for everything, else the breath including animals, both wild and tame, and birds, and it was so. Amen. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about the image of God. <coughs> and God shared this on my heart uh, when I was recovering from surgery. And the thing about the book of Genesis, it really talks about, it really has a concept of reconciliation, restoration, uh, for the earth and for creation. And the thing about it is this, is that, you know, the earth was void mm -hmm. and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It was confusion. It was chaos. But the Spirit of God hovered. He relaxed on the dark, darkest areas of the earth, the deepest dark areas of the water. And he said, let there be light. And the light manifests and the light was good. So he divided the darkness, which is chaos from the light. And one of the things God was sharing with me is that when the Spirit of God relaxes upon you in the form of healing of the physical body, he begins to minister to the deep dark areas where the enemy has infiltrated you. He does a creative work on the inside of you and changes begin to take place. Now the earth was going through a healing process. Once the light began to manifest, the earth begins to heal. And as the earth begins to heal, God saw that it needed structure. So on the second day, he begins to divide the waters from above from the waters of beneath, and he put a firmament in it. So the Bible teaches us through the teaching of the Apostle Paul, let everything be done in decently and in order. Even in the reconciliation and the restoration and the healing of creation, God made absolutely sure that the earth will be structured and things will be done decently and in order. Now, on the third day, a resurrection begins to take place. The earth begins to manifest dry land, and it begins to begin have seed-bearing fruit, or seed-bearing herbs, and the earth begins to do, begin a makeover. Now, God called the earth, when he made the firmaments, he called it heaven. And one of the things God showed me is that man was created in the image and the likeness of God, but the earth was created in the image and likeness of heaven. The earth was a place where God was beginning to renovate as a dwelling place. And now, as we begin to see that God begins to do some wonderful things, and he begins to call forth the waters to bring forth animals, he begins to speak life, and life begins to appear, birds, the fowls of the air, the sea, the whales and the fish of the sea, it begins to manifest for the, for the purpose that man needed responsibility, man needed, the earth needed to be held accountable under man who we, who we begin to create on his image and his likeness. And the thing about God's image and his likeness, it manifests in twofold. Before Adam, had a physical body, according to Genesis chapter 2, 7. 
He told Adam, he said, listen, all the plants, all the herbs bearing seed has been given you to eat and it's been given you for meat. Now, this is before Adam had a body. So therefore, type of thing, God had commissioned before he had a physical body to begin to have, to have substance in the earth where the earth will minister to him for the sustainability and for the replenishing of his physical body. Now, this was before he had a body. So God forms man in Genesis 2 from the dust of the ground. He breathes into man's nostrils, man become a living soul. Now, the thing is, is this, is that there was a covenant established in Genesis chapter 2. When God formed man from the dust of the ground, and when he breathed, breathed in him and he became a living soul, there was a covenant established between the earth, between God, and between mankind. And how do we know that covenant was established? Because blood was flowing in the veins of man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The earth... The first concept of ministering to man for physical sustainability was given to the earth to have eternal life. Thank you, Lord. And one of the things I've learned, and now I understand, that creation itself was violated when man began to fall. When he fell and sin came into the world, creation itself was violated along with mankind. And if you look at the scripture in Genesis chapter 1, it talks about times, it talks about evening and morning being the first day, it talks about seasons. Now time was a factor in Genesis chapter 1. But time was not the driving force because God is an eternal being. He created man to be an eternal being. So time was a tool in God's hands to structure the creation of the earth. <laughs> man, when he fell into sin, man began, the enemy began to use time through death, disease, and destruction to be able to weaponize it against man. So therefore, he was never subject to time. Time was to be a tool for seasons of celebration, seasons of, of, of structure, seasons of timing and fellowship with God, but time became a weapon used for his demise. Ah, thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Lord. All right. The Sabbath, when God rested on the seventh day, the formation of man's physical body because in the, the Hebrew talks about the Sabbath being a day of the uh, day of rest, of course. It's a time where God ceased from his labor, but it's a time of celebration. And when God saw that there was no man or no people to cultivate the earth, he created the body. Now, the significance of the body, we talked about the image of God in spirit form. He created man in spirit form, but also this twofold. When he created the body, God created a monument unto himself on the earth where you can physically see the image of God through the physical body. That's why God said in his word, have no graven images before me, for I am the Lord thy God. He is a jealous God. Because why? The physical body was formed to be the image, the physical image of God on the earth. See, that's why he's so radical about healing. Because when God heals the physical body, he's healing his image, but also the body represents his likeness. The image represents, is reflective of God because God is a spirit, but his likeness is manifest through the physical body. For he says, I am the Lord that heals you. That's why Paul had the revelation. He said, honor the Lord with thy body. He says, he said, he talks about to the Corinthians church. He said, the body is not for fornication, but it's for the Lord. Because when you think about the physical body and all the details, type of thing, God said, it is a monument unto me. Now, we think about athletes. They make statues. They make monuments of famous players and famous people within a country. God said, listen, your body is a monument to me so much so that when you come into the new covenant under blood, I'm going to identify you as the body of Christ. 
Collective individual bodies can make up the body of Christ. God's preferred way of travel on the earth is through the physical body. That's how he expressed himself primarily through the physical body of those that are in covenant with him. That's why Jesus, the Bible said, when the fullness of time had come, God had prepared a body for his son. Now, the thing is, is this, we think about the flesh and we think about the body in a negative connotation because that is because of the sinful nature. But this, there's a difference between the physical body that God created in Genesis chapter 2 and the nature of sin that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 6. Mm -hmm. It's two separate things. And a lot of times when we think about the flesh, we think, we think about the body in general, and we, we, we lump them together. But there's a difference between the nature of sin and the physical body. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So God has been teaching me. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was asking God to, will you heal me supernaturally? Or will you heal me naturally? Or will you heal me through the doctor's hands? He said, it's according to your faith. He said, I can heal you supernaturally, yes. But as the diagnosis, when I first received the diagnosis, over a period of time, my faith begins to waver over the supernatural healing. The enemy began to play with my mind. He said, listen, you're feeling this and you're feeling that. The cancer is beginning to metastasize. So therefore, type of thing, eventually, because my faith was waning in that area for the supernatural and listening to doctors and listening to family members and listening to the lovely church people for, for advice on what to do and what not to do, God gave me a peace when he said, listen, the only difference between you and the woman with the issue of blood is that the woman with the issue of blood, her doctors, didn't have a solution. Your doctors had a solution. And so therefore, because he knew that my faith was waning for the supernatural, his grace ushered me into the doctor's hands to be able to remove the disease, the chaos that was out of my body. Amen? Yes. Wow. You know, uh, one of the things that I was asking God about, you know, because my wife and I, we both were dealing with the same situation at the same time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I was asking God about, well, the, the concept of, of affliction, mm -hmm. you said many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver you from them all. But you also said, mm -hmm to let not sin reign therefore in your mortal bodies that you shall obey the lust thereof. I was asking God, is there any place in my physical body where sin has dominion? And the Lord said to me, he said, there's areas where you don't trust me in. See, the thing about healing is this, is that most of the times when we see saints afflicted and extremely afflicted with certain issues and certain diseases, the first thought is they must have sinned. It must have been some form of adultery or some form of pornography or, or theft or something egregious that manifests through their body that they've been practicing and they've been hiding. But sin in its basic form is when there's areas in your life where you don't trust God, you don't have faith, and it opens up the door for darkness or chaos to come in. And I learned that. I said, God, help me to be able to develop in my trust and my faith towards you that you can close the door to every form of chaos that will try to enter the body because I know that this body is an image. Mm -hmm. Though it needs to lose weight, it's still a monument unto yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Though it has a belly, it's still a monument Amen. to yourself. <laughs> and help me to be able to be a good steward over this monument. <laughs> Lord, help me to understand <laughs> that any form of unforgiveness, any form of, 
of things that are impure in the mind, the thoughts, the imaginations can open up the door for affliction in the body. Now, the thing is, I don't, listen, don't fall under condemnation because I'm still redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm sealed until the day of redemption. I have the seed of the word on the inside. But as far as sin is concerned, he said, don't let it rain because the body is dead to sin, but alive unto God. Yes. And see, one of the things God made absolutely sure about is that when Jesus rose from the grave, he made absolutely sure there's one thing that we know, that the body is dead to sin. The image of God, the physical image of God, the monument known as the physical body formed from the dust of the ground. In Genesis chapter 2, he redeemed that body by eliminating the nature of sin from it with the promise of a glorified body to come. So therefore, the mindset that we're always a slave to sin, we're always subject to it, we'll never get rid of it type of thing, that's totally demonic. And one of the things that the enemy will try to do, he will try to reestablish the nature of sin through you in areas where the mind is not renewed. Areas where there's wounds and there's hurts in the soulless realm, the mind, the will, and the emotion to try to get you right back to where Adam fell, where the body can now be an instrument of unrighteousness instead of being an instrument to righteousness. That's why the earth, the Bible says the earth groans and travails waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, waiting for the light of Christ to once again manifest in the earth. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. <laughs> When it says God so loved the world, it's not talking about just human beings. It's talking about all of creation, mm -hmm. the cosmos. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Paul talked about that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So salvation and redemption and deliverance is available to creation, the universe, as well as human beings. And God forbid if there be any aliens involved, <laughs> salvation is available. <laughs> Amen. You know, every time I come here, you know, God deals with me. It's always a message that I'm uncomfortable with. <laughs> because healing, I never grew up being taught about healing. This is not something that I learned in vacation Bible school or learned in Sunday school as a child. And it's a constant manifestation of revelation and insight. Though it's very simple according to your faith, the revelation of it can be awestruck. Mm. So when I read the book of Genesis, I said, my God, you reconciled yourself to the earth when it was dark and void. You restored the earth. You brought forth healing to the earth through your light. The, re the earth experienced a resurrection. You commissioned the earth to minister to us for the sustainability of our physical bodies, that we can be representative of you on the earth. My God, mm. no wonder the earth... No wonder the Son of God was determined to save all of creation along with mankind, that the relationship between creation and man can be restored. That's why Jesus, when he spat on the ground, spat in the man's eye, picked up dirt and spat in the man's eye, he was recounseling man, showing in, in the midst of ministering to the circumcised, he was recounseling man to be able to understand that the earth was created for your sustainability and for your healing. That's why the enemy does everything he can to pervert it through the food, through the water, because why? He doesn't want us to live a long life. He doesn't want us to live a long, prosperous, healthy life. He wants our minds to be confused. He wants us to be angry. He wants us to be filled with all type of demonic spirits. Why? Because and he understands the earth is designed to support that. Wow. Let us turn to Romans chapter 6, verse 11 through 14. Amen. Hmm. And I'm going to start 
And we talked about this earlier, but I'm going to start. I want you to read the scripture. Romans chapter 6, we're going to start in verse 12, and it reads. He says, let not sin control the, the, new, the new living translation the way you live. Yeah. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God, for you were dead spiritually, but now you, are, now you have a new life. So use the whole body as an instrument to do what is right to glorify God. Sin no longer is your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. <laughs> you know, I, that, that scripture says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. I think he had a revelation there. He had so much of a revelation that even when he was caught up in the third heaven, he knew the importance of the body. That's why he said, whether I was in the body or not, I can't tell, but God knows. Mm -hmm. See, when Apostle Paul was caught up in the third heaven, I think in the book of Corinthians, he had the same experience, a very similar experience that Adam had in Genesis chapter 26. He met God spirit to spirit. It was so powerful that he didn't know whether he was in his physical body. Amen. One of the things I, man, one of the things that I really find myself trying to understand is the prayer of faith. And I understand it uh, uh, has a, a certain level of understanding, but I, there's more depth to it than, than based on my limited knowledge. You know, the, th the thing about it is this, is that the level of trust, especially when you, you're going through a diabolical disease, or especially when you're dealing with something that's life-threatening, the level of faith, sustainable faith over the course of, of time, day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, with all the temptations and all everything that's being said, the mind can be overloaded mm. with all manner of doubt and unbelief, all type of questions. Your imagination, it begins, it, it, it invades your imagination. Your motives and intentions are challenged in a, in a, in a very, very profound way. Mm. And you're asking God, why? Mm. Or you're asking silently, but they may not verbally, but you're asking God when. You're asking God how. You're asking God what. And one of the things that I've learned that the main, the main thing with the prayer of faith, that no matter what you see or what you hear, that intimate time spent with God and knowing his word according to his covenant, that's the sustaining power that can get you through the winds and the waves of all manner of doubt and unbelief. When doctors are telling you you have to do this and you have to do that, or, or you know, or when they, when, at times when they try to use their professional expertise of practicing medicine to intimidate you into procedures or into other ways of treatments, you have to develop <clears throat> in your intimate time with God and a strong foundation in his word to stand yes. on what you're believing God for, mm -hmm. according to his word. And I'm going to confess, <laughs> when I was diagnosed with that prostate cancer, I was strong in the beginning for supernatural healing. And I had a few people standing strong with me, but over time, mm -hmm. like, a, like a good offensive line, they just wear you out. <laughs> you get tired. <laughs> Then you start feeling, the enemy starts throwing a pain in your leg and a pain in your knee and a pain in your neck. And he starts talking to you aggressively. 
It's metastasizing. What are you doing? And God in his grace, he didn't judge me or he didn't condemn me. Because according to my faith, there was sin there. I, I wasn't trusting him for the supernatural anymore. But God found a way through the scriptures to encourage me, okay, fine. You're not developed for the supernatural. Let me give you a scripture to encourage you with the woman of the issue of blood. Go use the doctor. He is a Christian. And I will use him to surgically remove the problem that you can be at peace in your heart and peace in your mind. Because I, I you know, sometimes, and I, man, this is a hard message. I can be a macho man in the spirit, you know, and, and I've seen God use this body to bring forth supernatural healing to other people. But myself, I'm buckling at it. I'm, 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 I'm kind of dwindling when the challenge faces me personally. And it, it was a little bit, my ego was hurt a little bit, a little bit embarrassed. But God in his loving grace, being the father that he is, being my shepherd, took me under his wing and said, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You're going to face the test again. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. So I just want to encourage you. Yeah. Um, I didn't come here to be a robust preacher. I just came to you to share from an area where I was broken, an uh, area where I was struggled, area where I lacked faith in, but God being my shepherd and my father brought me to. I came to share with you the importance of the earth and why God wants to redeem us as well as redeem the earth and how we should be prayerful and what we indulge on through prayer with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So I just want to thank you guys for receiving me. Uh, God bless you. And... Amen. Would you be willing to take questions? Sure. You've unpacked and imparted so much. Um, that's new to me. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I just love the, the work pictures that you painted about how God brought reconciliation mm -hmm. and healing to the earth mm -hmm. for our benefit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, this graven image thing, mm -hmm. maybe you could um, just fill that up okay. a little bit more. Sure. Um, well, when I was reading the scripture, the Lord showed me that the very people, the very bodies that I created on the earth, though it fell into sin and its in nature, they were creating images of false gods and worshiping false gods. And that's why I say I'm a jealous God. I'm very zealous in that area. I have no other God before me. Not only do you not understand who you are as far as an image bearer in Christ, but you're creating a symbol of a false God, of a false deity. When I made your body the symbol of who I am, the one and true God, and so I found that out to be true, uh, that's why he's so adamant about the physical body, as well as adamant being about the earth. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool, because uh, the earth was made in the image and likeness of the third heaven, his dwelling place, originally. <laughs> and it was contaminated. So the body and the earth, type of thing, go together, and God is very zealous towards both. But it must have hurt real bad that his covenant people had basically, in many ways, rejected him and began to worship false deities and went as far as to build statues or monuments or altars and a lot of those statues were made in the image of creation in which they were supposed to have dominion over in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and chapter 2. So God began, he began to be jeal zealous in that. And jealousy, God's jealousy in the Hebrew, it means he's zealous. He's very aggressive towards correcting the problem and holding uh, the situation, uh, the people accountable in that situation. And does that reflect in any way in our churches today? Are we seeing examples of graven images in the heart, in our religion? In, in not so much outside, okay. but it can be outside, but in the heart. In our heart. Um, we have things that we hold dear to our hearts. We have images that we hold dear to our hearts, <clears throat> uh, whether it be pornographic images or images of wealth or images of unforgiveness. Those images, type of thing, are reflective of idols in our lives. Now, there's many different ways it can manifest in the physical. <laughs> uh, just look at the cell phone. <laughs> when you're staring at your phone all the time type of thing, and 
the cell phone in itself uh, has become more so of an idol to the point where it's prioritized more often than not above God and above spending time with God. Um, so the cell phone is, itself type of thing has become an idol within itself, actually replacing the physical body in many ways as the image of God. <laughs> because why? We made it to God on our dependency on it. I have a question. Yes, sir. You, you stated that God, heard, that God sent to you, I would heal you according to your faith. Yes. You also stated, let me just find it, um, are we trusting God for the supernatural? Mm -hmm. And as a healing minister, um, I wouldn't be honest if I didn't say to you, because there are people I know mm -hmm. that are very sick, mm -hmm. and you know, and I and I pray for them. Mm -hmm. And but I, but I also believe, even if they don't have the faith, mm -hmm. if I have the faith, mm -hmm. that's all that's necessary to do the healing that I think God is asking me to do. Mm -hmm. So I struggle with this a lot. Mm -hmm. because um, I realized that um, God made it side to do it in the supernatural mm -hmm. um, but then again he made it side to use doctors mm -hmm. to provide the healing yeah. and then again um, he may wait until they pass from this earth mm -hmm. before you know, he heals whatever they're suffering with mm -hmm. uh, but um, can you help me with this a little bit so I have a better understanding of of what he's saying here because I'm, I'm sensing that when you had um, prostate cancer mm -hmm. you were really hoping yeah. I, know you, I know you well enough mm -hmm. to know at that moment I, I sensed that you were hoping that he would feel you in the supernatural mm -hmm. and, and so how did, how, did, how did you personally deal with all of that? Well the, the thing is is this um, it was an endurance. My, my trial was an endurance of faith. Um, between the time I was diagnosed to the actual surgery, it was three months in between. Could I hold fast to trust in God for the supernatural in the midst of all that was around me? And that is when that enduring faith begins to dwindle, because I've seen where God was supernaturally, they call it, he intervenes with his faith, where a situation where we're not really believing so much. There's some belief there, there's some faith there, but we're not believing so much. But he intervenes with his faith. And mani the manifesting of healing takes place, and miracles takes place right now, the God type of faith. We have that. But I believe he allowed me to go through that to be able to exercise my endurance, to be able to develop a fruit of the Spirit in this area type of thing, and endurance and in persistence and patience that will be able to benefit me down the road. And so when he saw that I was waning and I was struggling and I was becoming afraid, his grace stepped in, his mercy stepped in, his compassion stepped in. He said, okay, because I know you love the word, let me give you a word to release you mm -hmm. to go another route. Mm -hmm. There's another route, there's another option that I have for you if you will receive it. And I, I took that option. So a lot of times it's not necessarily that you don't have faith or maybe the person don't have faith. Sometimes it's an endurance over a period of time. Can you sustain it for a week, for a month, for six months, for a year? My wife is going through that. It's been six years since she's been diagnosed with breast cancer. And it's been up and down, hills and valleys, mm -hmm. you know, confusion, mistrust, hurt, pain, wounds. I'm trying to get her to go to life realize women, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's another story. <laughs> but, um, but she's going through an, a, a long stretch of endurance of her faith. And I've been able at times, God will use me to assist her. When she's down, sometimes God will use me to encourage her. And she's still encouraging me type of thing, even though she's going through the, going through the situation. But one of the things we talk about all the time, he said, listen, and she, she really can't comprehend sometimes how come somebody can get healed instantly <laughs> and why it would take her six years still seeking God for complete healing. And the only thing I can come up with is that God is in, giving you the endurance and the patience, and you'll benefit from it down the road. You have to trust God in this situation, that he will withhold no good thing from you. Yes. 
but all things will work for the good of them that love God and that are called according to purpose. The six years mm. of chemotherapy and needles and surgeries, I have to believe God is going to use this for your development and your faith and your love walk and for your glory eventually on the earth. Mm -hmm. I have to believe that. Um, you are an answer to prayers that I've been praying. Uh, we went to a Joan Hunter conference last week, and there was one day where she was laying hands on people, and people are going, wop de wop de wop you know? And, and they're being healed, they're on the floor, you know, the whole nine yards. And she came up to me, and nothing happened. You know? And it's like, what? <laughs> And I said to her, you know, we were talking later, and I asked, I said, nothing happened. And she said, well, what do you mean, nothing happened? And I said, well, you touched me, and nothing happened, yeah, yeah. you know? And um, she said, well, we go by faith, not by, by our feelings, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, so Satan took the opportunity to really tell me a whole bunch of negative oh, yeah. things yeah. in between oh, yeah. time about myself, yeah. you know, and the reason that I... You know, that didn't happen. And then I got tired of mulling all that stuff around. So it was this afternoon. I just said, Father, I'm just putting this whole situation on your altar. And please give me an answer. And you have. Thank you. <laughs> You've touched on two places that I'd like to go a little further with you. Uh, it's evident in your walk and in your message that you hear God. Can you help us understand a little bit more of what that is like? Do you know his voice? I mean, you're, yeah. Is it? Over the years, over the years, yeah, over the years, um, you know, this has been a, up and I haven't always been faithful to this, spending intimate time with God. You know, because <clears throat> my mind, you know, I'm, my mind is, you know, we're used to constantly always going, I'm always interested in different things, different facets of life. But once he begins to settle me, he begins to settle me down and spend intimate time with him. He began to minister to me about I'm going to speak in your right ear primarily. I can speak through people, I can speak in other areas, but I'm going to speak in your right ear. But for you to develop that, you got to spend more time with me. And for you to develop that, my right ear, spend more time with me. Yeah. And what he required from me, I want you to get up early in the morning when the world is silent, everybody's sleeping. Very few people are outside of the world. Very thoughts are manifesting in the atmosphere. And I want you to spend time with me. And that's why I've developed in hearing my voice um, more clearly. Mm -hmm. And his choice of speaking to me is through the right ear. <clears throat> um, I don't know what that means, but that's how that developed. Intimate time and quiet. Did it start with you asking? I want to hear you more clearly. You know, I really didn't ask for it. <clears throat> I, you know. It's it not sovereign. Not exactly. Um, it's not something that, oh, I want to hear God's voice on here. That wasn't an aspiration. Preaching, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. preaching to large crowds, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but hearing God's voice, <laughs> that wasn't an aspiration. But it became his aspiration once I began drawing closer to him. Once I drew closer to him, his desires became my desires. His ambitions became my ambitions. And one of his ambitions is I want to speak to you in the right ear. And that's the mental desires. Something, mm -hmm. something you said. I spoke directly to me, and that's uh, and used the illustration of our phones, our cell phones as mm -hmm. an idol. Mm -hmm. I never even gave that any thought because I'm constantly on my cell phone. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, you know, I try to make him uh, the priority in my mor in my morning. Yeah. But as soon as I'm done with prayers, uh, I'm immediately on my cell phone. Yeah. And and I didn't even I didn't even realize that I was making my yeah. cell phone an idol. So that spoke directly to me. Well, I was in the airport the other day, and you, you'll be amazed how people disregard communicating with one another, talking to one another. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can care less whether a physical person walk by them, but it's just all into the phone. They sit next to each other and, yeah. and, and text each yeah. other, sitting yeah. next to each other. <laughs> yeah, and, and that in itself, you know, it takes priority, at least in that instance, over everyone in the airport. Now, it probably takes priority for some people in every other year in their lives. Mm -hmm. Because now the enemy has said, okay, fine. I'm going to put everything that you need mm -hmm. on this phone. And I'm going to make this phone an idol. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to do your banking on the phone. You're going to stay in contact with your family on the phone. 
You're going to have you're going to be, uh, be able to communicate on the phone. You're going to watch movies on the phone. You're going to listen to worship music, read. Everything is in your phone. All the uh, what the necessities of life the enemy is trying to put on the phone. So therefore, he's trying to elevate it to idol status, and we have to be careful with that. Mm. Um, that we can't do without it. Mm. Um, even in the workplace, um, if you don't have the right phone or the right connections on your phone, you won't even be able to perform your job. Mm. So therefore, whatever profession you're in, whatever industry you're in, the phone takes precedence, precedence, and it becomes idle even in the workplace. So we have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. So what we could do is remember as a tool. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That's a good point. It's a tool. That's a, that's a good point. Because in the beginning, in Genesis 1, time in Genesis chapter 1 was a tool for structure and recreation of the earth. But it became a weapon once man fell. The phone is supposed to be limited to being a tool. Something that we do type of thing as, as a, an instrument to help us to get to this life, but not be the center point. Um, help me, I, I know I'm taking a lot of questions, but we have time right We can think of a better place to be. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to connect for us a little bit more faith and trust for you. The operation of faith and trust and trust and faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. You're asking me how to answer it. <laughs> What came to me is that faith is, is something most people have, uh, initial faith. Trust is something that, it's really the same thing, but what I found with trust and faith, faith is the initiation. Initially, I'm believing God for the supernatural when I get the diagnosis. But over time, I needed trust. And my trust began to waver. I still have faith that God can heal supernaturally. I had faith type of thing, when I got the surgery to God, you know, I've seen it done. I've seen other people be blessed in that capacity. But my level of trust in him, day in and day out, it's the endurance of trust is where I fail. Mm. And that in itself, biblically, it, it's, a, it's missing the mark. It's, it's a sin. Mm. Uh, but it, it can be developed. It, you, don't, you won't lose your salvation. You won't lose your relationship with Christ. You will be redeemed. But it's an area type of thing where you miss the mark in that area over the enduring processes needed to be able to manifest what you want God to manifest in your life. Yeah, he met you with grace there. Mm -hmm. uh, I said he met you with grace, mm -hmm. right? And I believe there will be more grace yeah. in that whole area for you. Yeah. Yeah. And for each of us. Barbara said to somewhere there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sean? Um, I, I love the, the transformation and restoration ministry. You touched up on a lot of that. Even Mike had a, a good question about some of that stuff. But I'm, I'm really interested in how has this transformed and changed you leaning on faith and trust? How has that grown your relationship then with the Lord? I've been Honestly. humble. I've been humble. You know, I've been humble. Anybody who knows me knows that I had a problem with humility when it comes to spiritual gifts. <laughs> really knows me. And I've been greatly humble uh, through this process uh, because God has, has, has shown me that there's areas that you still need to be developed in. And life is not all about expressing your giftings or being in front of a crowd or things of that nature. He's really expressed that to me. Um, his love for me is far beyond how he can use me in any capacity in ministry otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so there's a humility that comes with that. There's a brokenness that comes with that. And I begin to, I'm, I'm feeling his heart even more and more day by day and his love and his compassion towards me as he, as he, as he begins to shepherd me through this transition and develop me into what he wants me to be. It's, it's a humbling experience. Uh, I understand submission more than I've ever understood it before. Submission to the Spirit, submission to natural, physical, tangible authority that He has on the earth. I'm understanding um, to have compassion upon others. I'm understanding type of thing. The, the doctors, I was always hard on doctors, but I understand that they're just practicing and they're just 
trying to figure out a way to be able to minister to the body in a way that can bring forth results based on what they know, based on what they study. They're very limited what they know, especially if they're not believers. They don't have the faith and trust. So I understand that also. So. Aren't you still in the process of restoration? Yes, I am, sir. So, I mean, I think, the, you know, we, we, we sometimes think that we're completely restored, mm -hmm. and yet there is a, a continuous restoration that's going on. You said, how did you say it about when the Holy Spirit hovered? hovers? Hovers, yeah. No, but you said rested. Relax. 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 Mm -hmm. So the thing is that there's this tension that exists mm -hmm. until we come to a place of relaxing yeah. and resting mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. Amen. And, and I think that that's the, a lot of times we're trying to fix something instead of resting yeah. or relaxing yeah. In, yeah. in the restoration process that yeah. we bring yeah. to our lives. That's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. And my wife was telling me, uh, yeah, that's an excellent point because my wife was telling me you're doing too many things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, okay, um, all right. It's, it's hard for me to say no. <laughs> Especially if you go and figure out what the rest was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can, can I say, uh, okay. you know, one of the things you're talking about hearing God. Mm -hmm. I think God speaks to all of us, but we're not tuned in yet. Yes. I think He speaks in different ways, you know. Mm -hmm. But like Sam, Samuel did not know that God was speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, but once he figured it out, yeah. then he heard God on a consistent basis. Yeah. I think God's speaking to every one of us. Mm -hmm. yes. It's yes. just whether we are really, yeah. how are you communicating with me, God? Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and once you figure that out, then you can fine tune that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that... Because what does it say? It says, he that has an ear, to hear. let mm -hmm. him hear what the Spirit has. So he, yeah. he's actually telling us to develop our hearing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I now I understand why he wants to speak to me in my right ear. <laughs> <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing you said, which is an interesting thing about Jesus himself, when he was here on earth, when you've seen me, mm -hmm. you've seen the Father. Yeah. So we saw the image. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was saying, look at me, I'm the image yeah. of, yeah. I'm the physical image, right? Yeah, physical so image. So you, you express that, we're created in his image and in his likeness. Yeah. On two levels, um, you know, spiritually and physically. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, isn't this something we say a lot, I see Jesus in you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what does that mean? We, we see the image of God in each other. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we should see the image of God in each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see Jesus in you. I see Jesus in you also. So what I wanted to say is that God chooses. Mm -hmm. right, can you speak up for us? He wants you to speak up for us. Can you speak up for us? Yeah. God chooses mm -hmm. what he wants to do in each of us. Mm -hmm. He could have chosen mm -hmm. to heal you mm -hmm. supernatural, but he chose not to mm -hmm. for whatever you say he gives you endurance, he teaches you to be humble. Mm -hmm. So he can be stable. Mm -hmm. But he's not always going to do it the same way mm -hmm. for yeah. everybody because he's trying to mold us, form us, mm -hmm. teach us. So mm -hmm. he will choose whatever mm -hmm. we need. Well, that time. Yeah, there, there's a scripture that says he won't put more on us than we can bear. So he knows where we're at as far as our level of faith, our level of endurance, our love world. And a lot of times, um, especially when you're developing, uh, and I'm still developing. Not old. Yeah, well, I'm still developing. Uh, he will hold back the hands of the enemy, but the enemy won't totally overtake you or run you over or destroy mm -hmm. you. But he'll give you just enough of a yes. trial or the devil tempts, but he'll give you just enough of a testing. Uh, where you will have the ability to do that testing, overcome that testing, to develop more in Him, just be trust in Him, be faith in Him. So yeah, that is correct. Uh, he won't put more in you than you can bear. He chooses to allow certain things to happen in your life for your development in Him. Um, and with my situation, this was a test in which I found out fairly quickly 
that there's still more development needed in certain areas. More restoration. More restoration. I was just, I was just going to say, my father was a pastor, mm -hmm. and he had a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. And he was out of the ministry for about a year. Mm -hmm. And God told him he was healed. And all of a sudden, his chest pain went away. Mm -hmm. So he was scheduled to come back and preach his first sermon. Mm -hmm. And the night before, he started having chest pains again. And he said, God, I thought you said I was healed. And um, the Lord said to him, what's more important, what I told you or what you're feeling? Mm -hmm. He says, that's where, where God showed me the difference between soul and spirit. Yeah, yeah. He said, okay, Lord. He said, if I walk down there and kill over dead, he says, <laughs> they're going to blame you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he woke up the next morning and still had a chest pain. Walked down the aisle, got up to preach a sermon, the chest pains went away, had a great sermon, and from then on he was totally healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, so that's a matter of that, that faith yeah. that comes from here. You know, that's given by God. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because when the doctor opened me up, because when I was diagnosed, the, the, the prostate was 80% cancerous, like 9 out of 12 uh, testing points was cancerous. When he opened me up, he was amazed. He said, I, I've never seen anything like this. It went from 80% down to 20%. No, praise the <laughs> Lord. So, so God was doing it. Yes. But because I was, you know, he gave me an out. That's a way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. Another way to look at that could be his cooperation mm -hmm. with your body which has you know, as Dr. has said many times, our bodies are designed to be self-healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think you wavered in your faith that you said that. Mm -hmm. And I think he was cooperating with the physicians and with you mm -hmm. to reduce that mm -hmm. such that there would be less chance of it metastasizing mm -hmm. outside your prostate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think there was a covering there. And uh, I, don't, I don't think it was a mistake to have the surgery. No, I don't. I don't think that. Um, but in other words, if you waited six months longer, would you be zero when the doctor examined you? <laughs> that was, I was thinking that actually. <laughs> 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 we'll never know for sure until you can ask him again. He'll tell you right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, we have a story like that. I mean, when my daughter, she had endocarditis, mm -hmm. bacteria of the heart, mm -hmm. kind of, and it was going through her, her uh, system, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they want to do open heart surgery on her, and uh, we we uh, we agreed to it. Mm -hmm. We said, okay, uh, we agreed that tomorrow you're going to go take her in, and you're going to do open heart surgery. But would you do us a favor mm -hmm. before you go in? Would you just check her one more time, mm -hmm. do an echo, and to see if if the uh, if the condition is the same? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, we we went ahead and agreed. Mm -hmm for the surgery, but then we, we called the church, we asked everyone to pray, and the, the next morning, you know, there, all these five doctors were in the, off, in, in the room with her doing this, and then they came out and they said, we in good conscience cannot operate at this time, because what was there is no longer there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, and, 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 the, and wow. the thing is, we made the decision whether if it was going to be there, she was going to have the surgery, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not there, there's no need for the surgery. Right. Mm -hmm. We, we we were putting it, mm -hmm. we, we couldn't delay the surgery. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, sometimes I think we're put in situations where where we, we, we have to trust God yeah. either way. Yeah. And yeah. it's like Shadrach, Mishra, whether you save us or you don't save right. us, yeah. our trust is in God. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, so it's the same thing. Now, I, we weren't promised that this was going to happen, mm -hmm. but we trusted God. Yeah. Yeah that he was going to take care of it one way yeah, or the other. other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. sometimes we get a little, yeah. we, we trust him that he's, yeah. he's going to take care of it the way he sees it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's clearly an area to, to meditate on and develop with the Lord, uh, this faith, trust, this relationship yeah. thing that, that God has for us. So, uh, for those of you who we haven't been to a healing meeting before, an evening healing meeting. Uh, there are prayer ministers here if you want prayer uh, individually. Uh, you're welcome to stay for that. Uh, Quentin, your time, you've been so generous with it. I'm not 
saying we're moving into a different transition. I just want to make sure that everybody knows what's available. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes these meetings will run into 9 o'clock even. So I just want to make you all comfortable to stay. But if you have to go, you know, what time is it now? Is it approaching 8? 8? 20. It's 8.20? 7.20. 7.20. Okay, so we have lots of time. So no one has to run out just yet. <laughs> I see another question. I'm wrong. Well, the, the whole subject of, of hearing from God, you know, I, I'll just say for myself, I mean, I have heard from him audibly on things that have happened totally unexpected. Every time I've heard from God, it was totally unexpected, including asking me to do certain things. And then uh, going back and whining about it not, not being the way I thought he was asking me to do it. <laughs> And, and heard him, you know, when I say audibly, I mean, you know, I don't know if it was audibly or in my head or what or in my heart. All I know is I heard him, and, I, and, and this sheep hears his voice and knows his voice. So I, every, every single time, I knew instantly it was him. But I struggle with the, the, the hearing from God. I struggle with it so deeply. And I spent a lot of time with, with Quentin. And he has shared what he does. And then I was at the Joan Hunter thing for the, for the last four or five days. And, and he brought another woman to me who shared what she does, which was almost identical to what Quentin shared with me. And that is, she spends three, four, five hours quietly and, and has, has what I heard to be the personal relationship that I'm looking for. But I also say, I feel like I'm on my own trying to figure this all out. And, you know, and I'm a little bit of a wrestler with God because I say to God all the time, there's got to be an easier way, Lord, than, than me struggling with what I'm struggling with because I want to hear you. Mm -hmm. You know, you spoke to Moses and Moses t spoke to you. That's what I'm, I'm searching for is that kind of a relationship. And I realize we're talking about a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, and He speaks to us all differently. You know, and it's, I guess I would add in there that when I journal, I hear from God. But I struggle with the fact, I, I realize that's the way He speaks to me. Um, uh, but I struggle with that because, you know, because I've heard Him other ways, that's the ways, the ways I, will, I want to hear Him. And so maybe the answer is, maybe I'm answering myself here, maybe the answer is, you know, uh, go with the ways you know that he's, he's speaking to you. Because I believe exactly what you shared, is that he's speaking to me all the time, 24 hours, 7 days a week, and I'm not hearing him. And, and so something's, something I'm doing is not working in terms of my personal relationship with him. So maybe my answer is, yeah, go back to the journaling and, mm -hmm. and, and do it that way. Um, but do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, I think because, I'm a, because we're human, and, and um, especially when we've experienced him in different ways, that's the way I want to experience him. I want to experience him that way, not so much of this way. Um, and, and I struggle. I, you know, I, I want to be honest if I didn't tell you, this is a daily struggle for me. You know, I mean, I long, you know, he's the most important, important person in my life. I want that kind of a relationship. Every day, every minute, 24 hours a day, and you know, the, the phone thing. I mean, let's take this thing and take it off my belt and throw the thing away. Because I didn't realize it was, I was using it as an idol, because I'm on it all the time. It has become an idol. It has everything that I do on this phone. You know, I don't even need to pick up a laptop. Everything that I need to do is here. But do you hear what I'm saying about it? You know, and, and we're the body. We are the church, right? Um, you know, and I know when we go to church, it's worship. We're worshiping Him. Um, and, and, and hopefully through, through, you know, what you as a pastor and other pastors share, we're, we're learning something that we can meditate on and, 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 and grow. That's a real struggle, I think, with a lot, a lot of people. Yeah, one of the things that I'm hearing is unmet expectations. Unmet expectations of what? 
So I, you know, and, I, and I do that. I take it from me and I give it to him and put it on the altar. I mean, we, we, we absolutely know we can't carry this stuff. We need to take it and we need to put it on his altar. Uh, but I can't. I'm hearing the word relax again. I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, I don't mean to take so much no, time on that. No, no, no. It's important it's, to make. It's just there's a gift there. You know, it's okay. Well, I mean, it's it's like I wanted to come here tonight because I, I wanted to. I don't I don't get to hear Quentin as much as I want to hear him. So I, I set time aside today to, to, to hear what Quentin, but what I heard was, was God speaking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so in a sense, Absolutely. I have to make time to, to spend more time with Quentin. You know, it's what I'm, in the natural, you're, you're saying if you want to hear from someone, you've got to spend time with them. Yes. And that's one of the things he said. He gets up early. I liked what you said in a sense because he said, I want to get up early before all the thoughts are in the air and when there's more yes. quietness. And your phone and, and different things are, are very distracting. And we know someone who wants to distract us from hearing God. Uh, and, and yet at the same time, if we make the time to come together and hear. So what Quentin does for me in a sense is he confirms I test what he says, and my spirit says, yes, that's the word, or that's Amen. true. Yeah. So you have an ability to do that, and that's another way. You actually hear in more ways than you realize. Well, he will use nature, he'll use life, he'll use circumstances, he'll use the prostate, he'll use all of those things to speak to you in some way. So he's speaking to us more than we realize. Right. But the, also, the, the thing I like about what he said is the relaxing, you hear much more better when you're not tense mm -hmm. or anxious. Yeah. Don't be anxious. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's that's uh, that's an important aspect of it. Thank you, Quentin, for sharing. Yeah, thank thank you, you for having me. There's, there's a lot of value in testimonies and, and what Quentin, you know, right at the heart of his, his message for us tonight is his testimony. And uh, we find uh, great value in hearing other people's experience. I'll share one with you that, that goes around this, this uh, word of faith. And uh, have you all heard the name Randy Clark? You know mm -hmm. that name? So Randy Clark uh, believes and prays for, he's anointed to pray for healing. He's been doing this for 45 years probably on the planet. And he goes on missions, he goes all over the place. So he's fairly well known. And uh, I was hearing him give this teaching when we were in uh, Guyana, South America. He said, I was, I was doing a meeting at a church in Fort Lauderdale. And I can't tell you exactly when this was, maybe it was five years ago. And uh, in the meeting, uh, a woman brought a man in, and he was in a wheelchair with his head in a, in a like a halo, like a grace. And he, he recognized the man, he knew who the man was. He was an NFL football player uh, that had uh, a year or so, 18 months before, um, in retirement, had gone to his gymnasium in Fort Lauderdale and was doing, what do you call it, a bench press when you're laying down and you're doing one of these? And uh, he dropped the bar with the weights on his neck, crushed his neck. Um, so after having operations and so on, uh, he still suffered from excruciating migraine headaches and limited range of motion. Couldn't pick up his children. And it was just, you can imagine, really beyond. He had metal, they had to go in through the back of his neck to do some repairs. This guy was just really debilitated and really suffering. And the other thing Randy knew was this man had been to every prayer minister, healing place that, that he knew. Like he'd been to everyone. Like Randy was his last, his last stop. He hadn't been to Randy yet. So the appointed time in the, in the service when worship was done, the teaching was over, and there was healing prayer, the wife brought her husband forward and asked Randy to pray for him. He did it and nothing happened. The meeting was over. And the second night comes, and as they're starting the meeting, the worship had just begun, 
when the woman brought her husband back, rolled right up to the front of the church and said, I will not wait for the worship and the message to be over. My husband cannot tolerate all this noise. He's in excruciating pain, and I, I demand that you pray for him again. So Randy says, you know, <laughs> okay. But he was very candid and honest with the man. He looked at the man and he says, I have very little faith for this. Very little faith for this. Is there anything else wrong with you that I might pray for? To build my faith. And he says, yeah, my, my elbow is in pain. It's been bothering me the last few days. Oh, good. Let me pray for your elbow. He prayed for his elbow. What's the pain now? Well, the pain's all gone. Can you move it? Well, yeah, I can. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> My elbow's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Randy said it was in that moment that he remembered a translation in the Bible where it's, it's most often, and one of y'all can recite the scripture for me, I'm sure, but it's uh, the words of faith in God. But there's this one translation Randy remembered reading, faith of God. And that little word, from in to of, landed for him. I may not have a faith for this, but I know God does. And he prayed for the man again, and the man's neck was healed. So he asked the man, would you go back to Mayo and have him check you out? To confirm. And Randy's one, a theologian, and two, he's, he likes to have the evidence before he will share a testimony like that. He likes to see it. So he, the man goes back to Mayo in Jacksonville, and, the, and Mayo does the typical workup for him, and uh, comes back in and said, uh, Mr. So-and-so, we're sorry to report to you that there's no change in your neck. All the scarring, all, all the stuff going on that we've been seeing consistently is still there. So the man said, so in other words, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. Oh, no, sir, you wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> and I wouldn't be able to do this Oh, no, sir, you wouldn't be able to do that. And I would still have headaches and pain. Oh, yes, sir. He said, okay, thank you very much. The epilogue of the story was the guy moved to North Carolina, opened a ministry to people in pain and suffering, right, and shares his story and just gives them a place to come and receive prayer. And he continues to collect his Social Security disability check because on the record he is. <laughs> I like that testimony. I mean, again, it's just that, that hopeful, where's the faith coming from? You know, it's in that relationship. And here's a guy, and we're going to post a video from Randy that just came through last week, where he's, he's speaking with a woman who's diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig disease. Do you know anything about that? Mm -hmm. It's uh, incurable. And you lose, you lose a bodily function, you don't get it back. And uh, eventually, your whole body will shut down. I've seen this happen in my work in healthcare uh, before this work. And uh, the brain continues to work, but the body, so you know that you're losing everything. And your speech will go eventually, and you won't be able to say anything about anything. And so this woman has symptoms of, of ALS, confirmed, speech is, there's impediment in her speech. She can't lift her hands higher than this. She's losing that range of motion. And a friend of hers, believing for her healing, right? Listen to God, had a, had a word from God, go to this meeting and have Randy pray for her and she'll be healed. And that's the testimony that will get posted soon. You can go to Randy Clark and see the testimony and you can see the woman's ability changing. And the point is, is that doesn't happen. Except like and I know each one of us have a testimony. Each of us have a testimony. And I'm, I'm saying as you will share your testimony of healing, of God's grace, of his endurance, of his getting us through, it will make a difference in someone else's life. Absolutely will make a difference in someone else's life. So I encourage us to, in the, in the right places and the right times, to share that and release it, you know, so that others can benefit.